Good morning. Good morning. This wonderful sunny day. Got to see everybody here. Uh, our illustrious and wonderful piano player, Mary Kay, is out sick today. Oh. So we'll be lifting her. We thank Dan for filling in. Many of you have asked. Yes, my wife fell oh. and she broke, or not broke, I'm sorry, she fractured the femur, oh. the ball in her femur, and she's at home. Oh. Not that she can't walk, she's in a brace, she's doing well, she's a lot better since she fell, and we didn't, I didn't want her stumbling around here with a crutch. <laughs> so rather than have her fall again, <laughs> I made her stay home. But she's doing very well, and I thank you for those who have called. Oh, what the hell? Well, we can save them for further prayer time. So let us stand for our opening prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, help us as long as we live on this earth to seek you daily and walk in a believing and affectionate fellowship with you continually. We pray that when the Lord comes, we will not be found hiding our talents, nor serving the flesh, nor sleep with our lamps untrimmed. May we be waiting and longing, but at the same time working and busy about the daily chores that are so necessary for the building of a well-rounded Christian life. Father, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 their errors. Forgive our hidden faults, O Lord. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over us. Then we shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. O Lord, hear our prayer and our confession and our cries to you. We lift things to you 
in silent prayer. Most merciful God, we, we confess we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given for all of us. And for his sake, God forgives you your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the first reading is sorry. The first reading is from the uh, book of Genesis, the 15th chapter. Can you hear me? No. Well, I'm all plugged in. I don't know what I'm doing. It's on. Huh? We'd love to hear your deck Okay. Is that better? The mic. Oh, the mic. That's the mic. Oh. No one told me that. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> Sorry about that. Which ear would you like? Neither. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. <clears throat> and that is how you start. Testing one, two. Still no. can't hear. Isn't it on? Yeah, it's on. Okay, it's on. It's not my fault. Oh. Here you go. <laughs> this reading is from the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Here ends this word. Thanks be to God. This reading is from the book of Psalms, the 33rd Psalm, to be read responsibly. To shout for joy to the, in the Lord, O you righteous, praise benefits the upright. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song, play skillfully on the string with loud shouts. For, for the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all our hosts. Let all the earth, he gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be, commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. 
The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse's false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot re rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. That he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, the Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Your ends of reading. Please stand for the reading of Hebrews. You notice it says the Holy Gospel of Hebrews. Hebrews is not a gospel. It's a scripture reading. Today we'll talk about, we're going to read to you the scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. We jump to verse 8. <clears throat> by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that was foundation, that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles in the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland, if they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared them for a city. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Actually, the scriptures of our Lord. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, it's funny. Oh, children. <laughs> it's funny. We have children. <laughs> Woo, sorry.
Well, today's Bible lesson will be based on the scripture, John 17, 20, 23. Now, see this? This beautiful doll is called, and I had to look it up <laughs> to how to translate it, because it's in Russian, Matashka. It's a Matashka doll. It came from Russia, and it's made of wood, which was painted by hand. Now, these beautiful dolls are popular, and have been popular in Russia for hundreds of years. They have become a symbol of Russia with the very finest art and craftsmanship and are collected by people all over the world. Now, when you look at this, at the Matashka, now that I've learned it, I can keep on saying it over and over again. <laughs> um, how many dolls do you see? One. One. One, that's right. When you look at the Matashka, all you see is one doll. Now, look what happens when I open it up. Now, this one was a polar bear, okay, it's white. When I open it up, what do I see? Another one. Right. And now, when I open, and this one's around there. When I look it up, open it up again, see another one. The worst. Um, right. What? The, yeah. There's a brown bear. And now we have a horse. And I keep on opening. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? How it keeps on. You open it up, and there's another one. This one is a black bear. All right. Now you know why I had. I need a trade. All right. And I open it up. Now you can probably guess what will happen. And I keep on opening up, there's another doll, right? But sometimes it's God's yeah, doll. Yes, so this one here, I believe, is the next one here. <laughs> See, keep on opening it up. Next one here, this is, I think, a fox, a gray fox. Yeah. I like animals, that's why I picked this one instead of dolls. I like animals, right? Sometimes it's yeah, isn't that cool how they do that? This one is an, an eagle. eagle. Yeah. Do you think if I open it up, there'll be another one inside? Yeah. Huh? You think? Yeah. You think? Yeah. All right. <gasps> Look at that. What? <laughs> so <laughs> the smallest, the smallest one, and it's. Is that the last one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, it's the last one. It's it's a fish. It's not an animal, it's a fish, all right? Right, see how it is? But as you can see, you know, they usually have these Matashka dolls, all right? You can see it all, look at that. How cool is that, is that amazing? Yes, sometimes, you know, they make them, sometimes they can have up to 30 of these. That's that's what I read. I'm going like one big one. Uh, one huge big one, and probably it keeps on going, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, yes. Now I think that this Batashka doll can help us understand a prayer that Jesus prayed for his followers on the night that he was betrayed. Jesus prayed for all of those who would put their trust in him. In his prayer, Jesus said, Father, I pray that all may be one as you and I are one, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. Jesus wanted all of his followers to be one. Now, just as the different dogs that are nested one, I'll do this the right way. <laughs> one inside the other to make a 
Matashka, we who trust in Jesus must become one in Jesus to make up his church. Now, we may be different in the way we look, right? We may be different in the way we look. Some of us are young, and some of us are old. <laughs> Our skin may have different colors, right? And we may speak differently. We may have different ways of doing things but if we put our trust in the Lord, trust is support, help, and love in Jesus, he wants us to be one in him, just as he is one with the Father. Now, we must put aside our differences and be united in him so that the world may know his love. Do you get it? <laughs> Do you understand it? Right? One. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, may we be united in our love for one another, just as we are united in our love for you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. noticed how she hesitated when she said old. <laughs> well, speaking of languages, colors, but it's funny how a single word can have such a broad meaning Today I'm talking about, as you can tell from our scripture reading, pretty much the focus is the word faith. It's basically a conceptual word. Because when we think about faith, I don't know about you, but a lot of things come to mind. I have faith that my car is going to start on Sunday morning. But we have in faith, we have a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, as Paul tells us. The evidence of things not seen, and to me that's amazing, because even Jesus told us that at one time, that that you don't see are the ones that have true faith. Now it's easy to think of faith as an abstraction. It might seem as if faith is a matter only of an individual conscience or a meditation of an individual mind. It seems bound only to the shifting considerations or values which people assign to them. The scripture presents a different image of faith, particularly in regards to the true and living God. I mean, look at our text. Faith is the substance of things. Faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out. Faith, Sarah herself also received. Faith, substance of things hoped for. Far from an individual abstraction, then, or passing whimsy, as it were, the faith that St. Paul elucidates here in the Old Testament, I should say, of the Old Testament, here in the New Testament, in his letter, is one that lives, trusts, and walks according to the promises of God. Abel trusted God. 
And his testimony of the blood sacrifice forever echoes as a foreshadowing of the cross of Christ. Even though Abel had been dead and buried for time immemorial. Similar with Enoch. Who walked with God in faith. And one day he was simply taken away to the kingdom of heaven. Leaving behind the ancient testimony that God found Enoch's faith pleasing to him. It was such an absolute. This kind of faith is not simply an individual exercise without some eternal eternal as well as external consequence but a living relationship with God by his eternal <coughs> word that unites all of us the individual to the master through him all those who put their trust in him are faithful the kingdom of God is built together and united by the faith of those who trust in Him, who trust in their Savior, creating the reality not only of our individual attention and our salvation, but of our unity as the redeemed people of God. Now, it's not surprising then that Paul would write, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here in Hebrews. Faith is more than a human idea. It's a reality created by the Word of God. The testimony of Abel's faith uh, differs from that of Cain, who slew him, as we know. Abel trusted in the word of God, foreshadowing the coming of the Messiah. Cain, however, wanted to do things his way. The terms of, his own terms, I should say. Differently, we could say, Abel trusted in God's word, and Cain trusted in his own. In turn, Abel's witness endured by the power of the living God, promised even after he was slain. While Cain's witness was cemented in judgment according to God's law. The word of God governed them both. But only by faith did the one receive grace which transcended death while the other received condemnation, despite the continuances of the curses of life in this world. Likewise, with Enoch, who walked with God, while the whole world was falling into the depravities which would soon prompt the need for Noah's Ark in the great flood. Enoch's faith received grace from his saving Lord, and eternal life in God's kingdom. While the unbelief of the world received wrath under the judgment of God and his law. Unlike human words and ideas that fit into or out of the minds every day. The word of the Lord endures forever. His ideas frame the whole of reality. <clears throat> we will either live in that word by faith, or we will perish under the word by unbelief. For there is nothing more real or consequential to our very existence, to rational beings, and of the whole of creation and the word of our living God. 
It's therefore necessary that we understand what faith is, as it is the only means by which the Lord is pleased with us. It's through this which he imputes to us his righteousness, which is through faith. Our fallen minds of men cannot in their <clears throat> depravity ascend to the king of the universe. Our thoughts, our words, and the deeds which follow originate in our fallen nature, which seems adept only in corruption and evil. Any faith generated solely from inside ourselves will be disordered and misplaced, either creating pagan idols or natural order around us. And let me say that again. Faith generated solely within ourselves. Faith, in order to be saving, must unite us to God. It must first come to us from God. Which is precisely when God speaks his words to us in the first place. The word, one's will and thought of God presses toward us and into our corrupted minds. Giving us something far greater to trust in than we could ever develop on our own. His word teaches us where we come from, how we've fallen, the righteousness we cannot attain by our own powers, and the promise of salvation made to us by the life death, and resurrection of the only begotten Son. His word comes to us as the way, the truth, and the life. And only He can provide. And which we can only hope to receive as the free gift of His saving love for us. This word of law, of gospel, creates in us the only kind of faith that can transform a condemned sinner into a child of God. A faith which repents before the revelation of our unrighteousness, lives by trusting in Him and His promise of forgiveness and eternal life. that he might impute to us the saving righteousness of Jesus Christ. Far from faith as a work or action or contemplation on the part of sinful man, faith is revealed as a work of God. He alone, through his eternal word, the ability to receive that word and trust in it, is an effect of the Holy Spirit working through that word which reconciles sinful people to our Father. It's even as faith declares the reality of the Holy Trinity. It is the Holy Trinity which is revealed as the source and summit, the very pinnacle of our faith. The Father is the creator of all things, seen and unseen. The Son, through whom all things were made. The Spirit, the giver of life, who, proceeding from the Father and the Son, testifies and draws all men that blessed Trinitarian fellowship the one God and three persons, undivided 
unconfused, is the sole source and means and surety of saving grace. Through which alone we receive grace and mercy and eternal life. Here is reconciled a tandem truth that they, that the just shall live by faith, and that by faith we are justified in his sight. For we know that by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified in his sight. And that if grace is received as the wages of human works, it is no longer grace, and the cross of Christ is made meaningless. Such revelation might seem like folly to a fallen and finite mind, which cannot perceive how faith in God originates from outside of himself. But the reality revealed in Christ alone is that only by an, in, an alien faith which produces an alien righteousness can we be saved by an alien grace so rich and free. Only our saving God could conceive such a thing to make it an eternal reality. And only He could bring such salvation to us by the power of His eternal Word. Well, if today we lament our lack of faith, or the weakness of our minds and hearts, and will to build an enduring bridge of fellowship with our Maker, we can be of good cheer. For God Himself has accomplished what we couldn't, so that we might have that which we could never earn and live as we could never imagine possible. In Christ alone is the salvation of the world accomplished, that by Christ alone all might hear the gospel of redemption and faith would come by hearing the word of God. Not by the power of human hearing or the charisma of human preaching, but by the omnipotent power of the Holy Spirit reconciling the word, the world, to the Father through the Son. Hear his word to you today. That today and every day and forever you may live in Him by grace through faith in Christ alone. Amen. 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 <laughs> Warm. <laughs>
giving you thanks for these gifts made to you to honor you and to give praise to your name and to recognize who you are to our communities, to those we assist with those funds that we are given. We do all that we do, praising your name and loving you with our very fibers of faith, knowing that you love us. in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and said take and eat this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me well after the supper Jesus took the wine gave thanks said, this wine is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. The table was set. Let's eat.
We have shared the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the remembrance that he shall return. Special lift to you those who are in conflict, such as uh, the Ukraine, or holding our breath for Taiwan. We don't know what's going to happen next. We know that you are in charge, and we lift it to you with the comfort of our faith that you are in control, Lord, in your mercy. Father, we also especially consider those who are first responders. They do so much for us and are often chastised for what they do rather than thanked. Our firefighters are the ones who go in while everybody else is running out. Our police who stand in the line trying to protect those who can't. Father, we lift all of them to you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we have several among us in our congregation who have injuries, who are sick, who are emotionally hurting. We lift the Sosa family to you. We lift the Snooki and her family to you, knowing that they all mourn for their loss. But our loss is your gain. And we know that you hold them close to you and love them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, I could go on. I give you thanks for the healing for Peggy, for those who are 
not hurting now that were not too long ago, knowing that it's because of you that they aren't. It's your love, your mercy, and our thanks, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we lift all of these things to you and many things, other things that from our hearts and our minds that you know. And we lift them to you in our silence. But we do all of these things, Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he place his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above me.
Yes, ma'am. I'm going to get a question maker. Do you think you can volunteers, for volunteers for the affair booth. Really? Still short. Okay. Good. Yes. I can't hear you, sir. Uh, Al? Uh, Bob? Bob? John? Whoever you are. I got a message from uh, Chad Nesnick's uh, father. Uh, we've been praying for him. He's had cancer. And his father says, uh, let me see here. He finished his uh, radiation this week. 55 sessions. We will face uh, what the doctor says coming up next week or two. Keep praying that the radiations uh, work. And thank your congregation for us, uh, for their prayers. Said he'll let us, he'll let us know as soon as he finds something out from the doctor. Anyway, thank you for praying for Chad. <laughs> thank you, Al. Okay. I did this to the prayers. Any other announcements that I missed? <laughs> okay, yes ma'am. Those of you who cannot hear Heidi, we still need teachers for Sunday school, but we say 2.75 years in need of. <laughs> it's a flexible schedule, and as Heidi said, it's a rewarding experience. You know, we have many Bible teachers, Bible teachers here who can attest to that. Okay? You're pointing at him. Does he have something to say? So you should do it. Said, oh, you should do it. All right, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> wow. that's, that's, that's one of those things where I volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Voluntold. Voluntold. Well and told. Our, okay, our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance.
peace and we'll serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have a temple talk this morning that I'd like to give. I press the button. It says green. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Sorry. What a beautiful morning we have. What a wonderful worship. What a great time together. It's so good to, you know, during the summer we sometimes miss a few Sundays and it's so good to be back. You might have heard this phrase, man plans but God ordains. You might have even seen that lived out in your own life where you have plans, you have ideas, you have goals, and then all of a sudden things start to change. And you might see things just a little different. And at the end of the day, you realize that maybe you weren't actually on the right track to begin with, and that God actually directed your moves in another direction. Well, our call committee has been meeting now for over a year. And just to review who is on our call committee, if you're not familiar, it's Jeff DeBoard, Ron Johnson, Sue Grunhoff, Linda Deese, Dave Ossendorf, uh, Sue, okay, let's see, Jeff, Sue, Linda, Lydia, and myself. Okay, got it, buddy. We have prayed for God's plan for our church, just as if God has, just as God has a plan for our lives. We all bring a wealth of experience from years of Bible study, being involved in the church. Jeff actually brings a few less years, but he's still a wonderful, <laughs> gives us a wonderful, wonderful perspective uh, from his youth. We have worked as a team as we looked at candidates that have come before us. We have found that some set opinions and ideas have been changed as we look at each candidate. We have earnestly prayed to do God's will and not use our own understanding. I know we have all witnessed the hand of God in this process, and I know we have all been surprised by what we have learned. As a point of review, soon after we started our process, we met with Pastor Perry, an LCMC pastor that helps congregations with a call process. He suggested that we do an assessment, which we did. This process was designed for us as a church to have a clear idea of what we thought and what was important as a congregation and a tool to help the call committee as we searched for a pastor. There were not a lot of surprises. One thing we learned that we already knew but was confirmed is that we are small but we are a strong congregation like a cord of twine, very connected by the Word of God. The fiber of our church is woven together with Bible study, worship, and the commitment to prayer and helping each other. We are a group of people who love Jesus and desire to do His will. As a call committee member for our call committee, I ask that you please continue to pray for us as we uh, move forward in our, uh, in our call committee meetings. We ask for the sovereign hand of God to be upon us and for your prayers also.
still coming here. 